Now let's look at another example. Two similar cylinders have heights 4 inches and 6 inches. What is the ratio of their heights? What is the scale factor? What is the ratio of their surface areas? And then we're going to have to find the volume of each cylinder and the ratio of the volumes. So where are the heights? The heights of the two cylinders are 4 inches and 6 inches. So the smaller one has a height of 4 inches and that's really that side here, 4 inches. And the larger cylinder has a height of 6 inches. So the ratio of the heights is 4 to 6, which of course we can simplify. 2 over 3. And that is our scale factor. So if our scale factor is 2 to 3, how can we find the ratio of the surface areas? Remember, we just said the ratio of the areas is the scale factor squared. Scale factor squared. So that has to be 2 thirds squared. Squaring the 2, squaring the 3, we get 4 ninths. That's the ratio of our surface area. Now we are supposed to find the volumes of each cylinder and fortunately they have given us the formula. The volume of a cylinder is pi times r squared times h. So where is r, the radius? The radius is the radius of that circle which is the base and the top. So a radius is 2 inches for the smaller of the two cylinders. So if radius is a length, what is going to be the ratio between the radius of the smaller cylinder and the larger cylinder? The ratio is the same as the scale factor. It's 2 to 3. So if the smaller cylinder has a radius of 2, then the larger one has a radius of 3 inches. So then let's find the volumes. The volumes of the smaller cylinder is pi r squared, which is 2 squared, times the height, which is 4. I'm going to calculate it, but I'm not going to even use the calculator to find pi. Just going to keep pi. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 pi. And it is cubic inches. The volume of the larger cylinder, V of L, is pi times the radius squared. 3 squared times the height is 6. And 3 squared is 9. 9 times 6 is 54. So it's 54 pi cubic inches. Okay. What is the ratio of the volumes? 16 pi over 54 pi. Now luckily the pi's cancel each other out. And 16 over 54 can also be simplified. That is 8 over 27. Maybe we recognize these two numbers as being perfect cubes. If not, not a problem. Let's use our calculator for that. How do we take the cube root? We press the button math, then go down to number 4. That will open the cube root and we just plug the number in. The cube root of 8 is 2 and let's just find the cube root of 27 as well. The cube root of 27 happens to be 3. So we're talking about 
2 cubed over 3 cubed or if you want 2 thirds cubed guess what this is our scale factor cubed so let's go ahead and write down what we just found out the relationship between the scale factor and the volume of similar objects the ratio of the volumes now is equal to the scale factor cubed and again think about volumes volumes are items that we measure in cubed units they are three dimensional and therefore the scale factor needs to be cubed let's look at an example two similar spheres have circumferences in the ratio of two to five given the volume of the smaller sphere is 48 pi centimeters cubed what is the volume of the larger sphere by the way similar spheres right are there any spheres that could not be similar think about it and tell me what you think tomorrow in class we are supposed to find the volume of the larger sphere so let's first of all talk about what is going to be the scale factor well they have told us that the circumferences have the ratio of 2 to 5. Circumferences are lengths. Right? So we are talking about a ratio of 2 to 5 which is equal to our scale factor. The scale factor is 2 to 5. Well, if the scale factor is 2 to 5, we now know that the ratio of the volumes has to be that number cubed. Two-fifths cubed is 2 cubed over 5 cubed, which is 8 over 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Okay, then, we know that the smaller sphere has a volume of 48 pi. 48 pi over the volume of the larger sphere. It has to be the same ratio as 8 over 125. And again, we're going to solve our proportion by multiplying across. We get 8 VL is equal to 48 pi times 125. Now we divide both sides by 8. And this is a multiplication on the right. Therefore, we don't have to do the division twice. VL is equal to 6 pi times 125 and 6 times 125 is 750 so VL is equal to 750 pi what was our unit? centimeters cubed and here is our volume of the larger sphere So let's summarize all the things we found out about the different dimensions of objects. How do we compute and use ratios for similar figures? The ratio of corresponding lengths is the same as the scale factor. And when we talk about lengths, just remember that we're talking about things that are in the first dimension. They have only one dimension. The ratio of the areas is the scale factor squared 
And now we're talking about two dimensional things. And then we have the ratio of the volumes, which is the scale factor cubed because volumes are three dimensional. And really, if we think about it, areas are in geometry the only things that are two dimensional. Areas are squared, units are squared, volumes are the only thing that we have that are cubed and three dimensional. Everything else, everything else is actually one dimensional, whether we're talking about sides or heights or perimeters, lengths, all one dimensional. So if we have one of these ratios, we can use it to find the other two ratios. If the ratio of the corresponding lengths is two fifths, then we just need to square the two and the five to get four to twenty five. And if we want the ratio of the volumes, we take the two and we cube it and the five and cube it and we get eight to one hundred and twenty five. If we have only the ratio of the areas, we have to go back first and find the scale factor. How do we find the scale factor? We need to take the square root of 9 to the square root of 4. And the square root of 9 is, of course, 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So our scale factor is 3 to 2. And now we can go from here and determine the ratio of our volumes by cubing 3 and cubing 2 and we get 27 to 8. If we only have the ratio of volumes we also need to go all the way back to our scale factor and if you'd rather use the calculator to take your cube roots, that's fine. Go right ahead. We need the cube root of 8. Math 4, 8. Enter. And that is 2. And we also need the cube root of 125. Math 4, 1, 2, 5. Enter. So we get 2 and 5 as our cube roots. Cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 125 is 5. So we have a scale factor of 2 over 5. And maybe you actually saw that that was the first one already. And you saw that the ratio of volumes was the same as in the first line. Anyway, we got our scale factor 2 over 5. And from there we can take the ratio of the areas, 2 squared, 2, 5 squared, which is 4 over 25. And those are all the ratios that we needed. Let's do one last example to apply this. Some information about the volumes and surface area of two similar prisms is given. Prism A's volume is 54 cubic feet. Prism B's volume is 16 cubic feet. And the surface area is 12 square feet for prism B. And we are supposed to find the surface area of prism A. The only information we have about both objects is the volume, so we need to start off finding the ratio of the volumes. So the ratio of the volumes is 54 over 16, which we can simplify to get 27 over 8. 
And remember, the ratio of the volumes is the cube of the scale factor. So if we want our scale factor, we need to take the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 8. Those numbers have popped up already a couple of times. So we know now that we're talking about 3 over 2. And that is our scale factor. And now we're supposed to use that scale factor to find the surface area of the prism A. But remember, the ratio of areas is actually the scale factor squared. So let's take our scale factor and square it. 3 squared over 2 squared is 9 fourths. And 9 fourths has to be proportional to the area of prism A that we don't know, area of A over 12. So let's solve our proportion by cross multiplying. 4 times the area of A is equal to 9 times 12, which is 108. Divide both sides by 4. We get A is equal to 27. And that would be 27 square feet. And here is your answer. For your summary, I would like you to take a few moments and write down in your summary section of the notes page explaining the relationship between areas, volume, and everything else of similar figures. Okay, that's it for today, and I will see you in class.